that the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> you what you got? You used to think you own the street. Put back the bag to your ass and dead meat. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 47 of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night SmackDown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten and WWE Headlines where we talk about any important news in the WWE Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP, or on the Spreaker app, available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording the podcast, it is posted full on Spreaker itself, on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWP, and it is also available on iTunes by searching the Lowdown Show Brand War. So go check us out, wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can follow the podcast on Twitter and join in the conversation by having your thoughts and questions read right here on the podcast by tweeting and following us at No Holds Barred WP. I am your host, the self proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And every week I'm continue to be joined by my co host, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Hello. How's it going? Good. And Greg uh, says, "Hey guys, what's up?" on the chat. Hi, what's up, Greg? What's going on, bro? You're gonna wanna. You're gonna wanna hear this. Gonna some... wanna hear this. So you know, we'll get it up. out of the way. And right, we'll start off the show with a bang. We're here to announce our Twitter fan of the month of for February. what is it? February. February. Yes, February. <laughs> I think I it's actually March was, now, but I think February. I was gonna say January. <laughs> it's a good thing <laughs> you corrected counting? me. Who's counting? Is it March? No. I, oh no, it's September. Fuck shit, September. Damn. Anyways, all right, let's get out of the way, and we'll get, get announce our winner. So, the winner of our Twitter Fan of the Month for February is Glorious Greg. Glorious Greg, you have won our Twitter Fan of the Month for February. Congratulations. So, guys, and what does that mean? What does that mean for our Twitter Fan of the Month? You know what that means? It means you get your tweets read first. Right here on the podcast for the entire month, and we give you a shout out every show. So we'll start right now. Shout outs to our boy Glorious Greg at Gillies on Twitter. Go check him out. Go follow him out, guys. Great guy. He's got a. He likes every tweet we actually put out there, and it's a great fan right there. Loves yeah, the podcast. Love what we do. And uh, what better time. deserving way to get Twitter fan of the month yep, for you're our, February? You're uh, one more uh, step on the way. Not the fast lane, but to <laughs> the fast lane. To... No, to Twitter fan of the year. <laughs> the fast lane to WrestleMania, our garbage pay per view. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yes, congratulations, glorious Greg, on winning Twitter fan of the month for February. Guys, keep going at it. We got a whole March to come, full month, not a half, you know, not a quarter. Well, it was like February is like a three quarter month, like twenty eight days. <laughs> uh. You got, you got a couple more days for March to build it, and uh, we take everything in consideration, guys. So we'll see. Give us some good tweets. And no one wants to go to Fastlane, Greg says. Yeah, no, no. One, no one wants to. I, if it was if it was literally in the city over, I'd probably still go, but I'm probably going to hate it. I wouldn't pay good money <laughs> no, to No, I'd pay like 25 bucks most for a ticket <laughs> in the top 300 section. Wouldn't care if I didn't see anything. I'm just going to be there. That's the only reason why I'd go. And I'd see my boy Kevin Owens. Sure. Okay, sure. <laughs> Shout out to anyone who listened to our yeah. hockey uh, podcast. Yeah, we had a uh, yesterday. We had a uh, we did a special podcast on wrestling related because our second love in life is hockey. We did a full day, nine a.m. to three, of the we did coverage of the NHL trade deadline day, which they gave us nothing to talk about. Yeah, so. there are some trades, but you know, mediocre at best. But we did an all day podcast. So go check us out. It's on Spreaker right now. In full part one and two. Long podcast, though, so brace yourselves. It's like two and a half hours each podcast, man. We were, we were tired after. We were exhausted. Oh. Um, but you know what? It was fun to do. We yeah. had a lot of listeners and a lot of feedback from it. So uh, Might do more in the future. We'll see. Yeah, we might do more in the future. We'll see. Maybe it's stuff uh, wrestling related, too. So, you know, again, like I said in the beginning of the year, 2017 is going to be a huge year for No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. It already has been. It already has been. And we got Twitter fans of the month. We Jesus. got a new laptop. Yeah, I got a new laptop. We got a new system here. And just going to keep going. All right. Well, let's start off with the tweets, I guess. And we got to start off with him in our Twitter fan of the month, Glorious Greg. Glorious Greg, where are your tweets here? There they are. I got them. I got them for you, kid. All right. 
So, he puts, Raw was shit. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. Except the Rollins and HHH segment. I give Raw this week a 0.5 out of 10. <laughs> That's wow. a low-ass score. Hashtag Monday Night Nap Time. Hashtag. <laughs> ah, yes, the roar, roars are back still. Uh, he put SmackDown was great. Opening promo between The Miz and Cena was gold. Also, the Styles vs. Harper match was good. Uh, I see a bright future for Harper, and I'm glad AJ has a title shot. And Apollo Crews getting more TV time is great. Orton turning on... Yeah, I gotta scroll up here. Uh, where is it? See, this is why this is why this is why uh, Twitter sucks for this. Okay, Orton turning on or Orton turning on White was awesome. I can't see what SmackDown does now that AJ is involved in, and just all around good show. You know, it was a good show this week, Greg. It was really, really good. This week, I give SmackDown a perfect 10 out of 10. He's got another 10 out of 10 for SmackDown. And I don't blame you guys for giving SmackDown a 10 out of 10. And also... Oh, oh my God. You guys for your rewards. Hey, I, I accept it. I have to... I'm taking the punishment for this because I said I would do it. So I have to do it. We give the limit to people. I mean, Greg only used two this week. So good for you, Greg. Next set of tweets, we got Juggy Badass on Twitter. He puts, Rob makes me want to cry as always. <laughs> This garbage is the reason why even why even though Fastlane is in my city, I will not be going. <laughs> oh, there we go. So we got to – this is how bad it is, okay? Fastlane is in this dude's city, and he's not even going because of it. And that's how bad it is. Insane. The only thing I can say is seeing a Cesaro and – is say, seeing Cesaro and Joe, I give Raw 2 out of 10 for the match. And also seeing <laughs> – SmackDown continues to produce greatness. Seeing Cena take a dump on Miz's career was awesome. Love Styles and Harper, and seeing Wyatt took helpless and int <laughs> okay, seeing Wyatt look helpless was interesting. Hmm. That is interesting. Got to tune in next week as usual. Can't wait to see how Bray responds to Orton burning the compound. SmackDown gets ten out of ten. Oh, and because I love you, Kyle. Hashtag. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Juggy Badass. Thank you for that. Appreciate it with your your roar tweet for me there. Um, you guys, I'm going to kill you guys. Give me the roars all the time. Oh, and Kyle, also, I don't remember if I already told you, but hashtag. You guys kidding me right now? <laughs> Give me your roars. Uh, okay, let's move on. Next set of tweets goes to our boy Casey Salvis. That's Salvis94. They're the always entertaining tweets. Raw was garbage. No need to comment. One out of ten. Boring as hell. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Casey. <laughs> I love his tweets. They're so brutally honest. <laughs> I still can't believe that. Uh, anyways, my reaction to Raw, he put a gif of some guy going, Oh my god, I'm so bored. <laughs> Oh, God. All right. SmackDown, he puts amazing show. 10 out of 10. He's got the Drake uh, standing up and applauding SmackDown. The A show was awesome. SmackDown never disappoints. Wyatt segment was great. Uh, great to see AJ win with the Mix promo or with the Miz promo was gold. And, yeah, that's what he puts for SmackDown. Yeah, Mid the Miz promo. We got a lot of talk about that when we get there. Um Next set of tweets comes from that gr that guy Greg, so Craig, sorry, that so, guy yeah. Craig. We got that a Craig, Craig and a Greg, you know. Craig and Greg. Uh, I did like the promo on Raw between Goldberg and Owens. Will Jericho cost Owens the title? Hmm. Uh, SmackDown ten out of ten. Raw I will give it seven out of ten. Don't know who has written the New Day stuff, <laughs> or who's writing the New Day stuff. As Biggie mentioned, he didn't write it. <laughs> okay. Uh, the ending of SmackDown was something different. Uh, we'll like to see where it goes with AJ as well. Thank you for your tweets there. That great, uh, that guy Craig, Craig Messi. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see where it goes from here too, man. It's uh, gonna be a good one, and we'll see what happens from there. All right, 
Next set of tweets. Irrelevance at Forlorn puts for raw. And he numbers them for me. I appreciate you guys numbering for me. It makes it a lot easier here yes, to read very. on Twitter because Twitter, you know, is god awful at putting stuff up. Uh, he puts raw for raw, but number one, so bad. Seth and Triple H segment was the only thing I liked. Just kidding. Braun Roman segment was interesting. <laughs> uh, and he also puts. <laughs> Looked dominant, looking real dominant. The top rope exploding was a great sight. Rest of Raw was, never mind, just. Oh, God. You guys oh, kill man. Me. Kill me. Um, I got to scroll up here. Oh, yeah, this is great right here. Uh, he puts Raw gets a 1. <laughs> SmackDown will get a 9.5. So he gets Raw 1. And SmackDown at 9.5. Interesting. So on to a SmackDown tweet. It's amazing show. Start from finish. Except Dolphin Cruise. Not much I can say except damn. The ending segment. Yep. We'll get into that later. Orton posing behind the fire. Looked like he's about to drop an album. <laughs> and he's got a picture <laughs> of like the, a Randy Orton album cover. <laughs> it looks it looks like a like a, a mix of Alexis on Fire and like an Eminem kind of album that they would drop. He's got like a track list and just to name a few. We got RK to the Izao, <laughs> Evolution featuring Triple H and Ric Flair, <laughs> Vipers over Buzzards, Playing with Fire, Apex Predator, Legend Killer Bitch, Out of Nowhere, Cruising to WrestleMania, Burn the House Down, and Voices. <laughs> oh, really? I like that. That's actually really cool. I'm gonna keep that picture. Um. He also puts, where's my boy? Oh, do I have to play it? Yes, I have to play it. Where's my boy? <sighs> At this episode of SmackDown. Oh, that's right. He's on Raw. My bad. You did that on purpose, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Irrelevance. Come on, man. Now that Braun is... Lo Lowes Bray is lost to Braun. Luck and Rant... Good luck with Randy. This makes Bray a loner now, right? Plus, <laughs> brand acting is superb. Rocket and India tells us Rocket to one SmackDown 9.5. Hmm, interesting. Uh, next tweets come from Prince Jones at TWFS Prince Jones, not Tyler Jones to get confused. Uh, Raw was and he just puts dot 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 dot. Simple as that. <laughs> I was put SmackDown was one of the better ones. It had a weird number one contenders match, but other than that, it was great. 9.781 out of 10. I think that was for you there, Brendan. <laughs> Uh, all right. Next set of tweets. We got Tyler Jones followed. So Prince Jones followed by Tyler Jones. Unrelated. Raw was ass as usual. Honestly, don't remember much about it. How bad? That's how bad it was. Two out of ten. SmackDown was pretty good. Again, shocker. Opening and closing promo was awesome. Interested to see what they do with the main event at Mania now. Um, which is sad to say because that won't be in the main event. It should because it's good enough to be in the main event. It's going to be Bork versus yeah. Oldberg. Yeah. 8 out of 10 for SmackDown, Tyler Jones puts. I talked about this with Cappy the other night. What do you guys think about redra redrafting after Mania? New storylines. Gets people interested again in it and it kill putting the – and it'll just kill putting the same stuff over and over. Hashtag. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I agree that they should have. I, I think they're going to do the draft. They are going to do one. I think it's June-ish. June, June I hope so because now they're just they're reusing same storylines. If you switch guys around, you can do new storylines. You can have new feuds. Yeah. So I am in favor of redrafting, redrafting yeah. every year. I just don't. We say we like redrafting, right? Yeah. But I don't want Roman Reigns on Raw or on SmackDown. He's got to stay where he is, and he's such a Raw guy. Well, you can move some pieces around. I'm not saying yeah. move everybody on yeah, one to the yeah. next show. But, but yeah, you got you have to. You're gonna have this. Got to be like a, a yearly thing, or else you're just gonna get stale shit and more stale shit on Raw because they don't know what the hell they're doing over there. <laughs> Anyways, uh, God, Greg puts the sounds funny and roar. Yeah, no man gains. Uh, let's get into the last set of tweets, and that comes from, and he's got a new theme this week to debut. Michael Chow. That's right. It's a debut of Michael Chow's new theme. He requested it, and I'm going to 
you know, I did it for you, Michael Shell. That's what you got. And I got the rock version for you. TJ Perkins. This is new Neville theme. would say. And you guys wondering out there why he's got an entrance theme. That's because he won our 2016 NHBWP Fan of the Year. So, guys, if you guys win this award, you'll have your own theme song before your tweets. Right for the entire year. So, Michael Shell, there is your music, my friend. Um... Let's get to his tweets. He puts cruiserweights and hashtag Roman fail. So the hashtag he said it's going to appear a lot. Saved Raw from the complete zero, but one out of ten. What a complete garbage. I'd rather watch the chaperone. <laughs> <laughs> went straight to DVD. Uh, the Owens and Goldberg feud is worst build I've ever seen. It is like they know Owens will lose in 60 seconds, so why care? <laughs> Braun helped Joe beat hashtag Roman fail. And Joe had to attack Cesaro's knee to win. Does everybody think Joe can't win matches? <laughs> and he, he has a gif of like Shinsuke Nakamura <laughs> pulling <laughs> Samoa Joe's nose off from NXT <laughs> after he's being held by security. <laughs> uh, question: Which fast lane match is the worst on the card? Mine is Owens and Goldberg because Goldberg can't wrestle, and we know who's winning. <laughs> I worst think you know, on the card? Oof. I think Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman's the worst on the card. <laughs> Why do you want to see that, man? I want to see Strowman squash him. That's the only reason, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I guess Owens and Goldberg. Man. There's not really nothing else I'd want. I don't want to see. I don't want to see Sasha versus Nia I just don't want to see the whole pay-per-view. How about that? I don't want to see Sasha get squashed by Nia Jax again, please. Yeah, I don't want to see that either. For SmackDown tweets, plus 9 out of 10. I normally don't like shows that end with promos, but Ray and Brandy Orton's segment was one of the best I've ever seen. 100% agree. The Miz is so good, they should be pushing this guy as the wrestler to take Cena's place, not hashtag Roman fail. And it's got Roman Reigns punching Miz on the face on like an episode of Talking Smack. <laughs> and Cena, I saw a lot of tweets saying they liked his promo, but I can't. Mm. Mm. What a whiner. He didn't get Taker at Mania. Boo hoo. Which, in a way, is not really his fault, because that was Taker's fault for wanting to face No Man Gains. So, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I thought it was a great promo. Yeah. What are your thoughts of the possible Bray vs. Orton vs. AJ at t for the title at Mania? I like it and predict match of the night. If they go that route, okay? If not, I would love to see Nakamura at WrestleMania. That's freaking reaching, though. I don't know if he's actually going to debut and face Styles. If not, Styles is going to face Shane McMahon. That'll probably be worst match of the night. Um, <sighs> I'd love it. Okay, I'd say I'd love to see AJ Bray and Orton. I think they can build something. It's just Bray and Orton alone, just after this week, could build this feud by themselves. I don't think AJ needs to be in it. Yeah, there's no place for him in it. I can't see him being in it at all. Uh, but yeah, if it happens, then I'm all for it. I think it probably could be a match tonight. There's a lot of good spots I can pull in that match. We've seen how Ray, Bray Wyatt can catch anyone and do a Sister Abigail off like a jumping move. So can Randy Orton Orton's done that with the RKO. So I mean, there's a lot of good spots I can put in this match. I think it'd be, if it happens, I'd consider it match tonight if they let them do everything properly. <laughs> properly, yeah. Everybody likes to hold back and a lot of stuff, but. Those are your tweets for the week, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate all of them. Thank you very much. Okay. So, yes, Greg, why? He puts why, Taker, why? I don't know. I don't know why. Okay. Undertaker wanting to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania is a different story. Fuck, I just, uh, I'm going to leave it at that because Undertaker's my boy and I still can't believe it. So, let's get into the Raw review. Talk about this dumpster fire of a show. And again, it wasn't that great. Raw just sucked again this week. Sucked the life out of me. After watching SmackDown, it really, really was even shittier than it was. Than I initially thought it was. SmackDown being so good literally made it go lower, my rating for Raw. <laughs> That's sad. Made Raw look even worse yeah. than it actually was. And you NXT was wasn't all that... Like, NXT blew Raw out of the water even even then. Like, the, the main event of NXT and the women's match, it was way better than Raw. Way better. But, you know, we got to talk about it because... You know, because Raw is somewhat watchable. Yes, Taker versus reason. Reigns is career suicide, Greg. Yeah. All right, so let's get into the Raw. Opening segment, we open with Goldberg. Goldberg opens the show. Hmm. When's, did Gold, has Goldberg opened the show yet so far since he's coming back? I don't, I don't I can't really, I don't no. really, I don't really know. Anyways, Goldberg opens the show. Crowd is completely dead. 
in Green Bay. And Cappy, you got to add to the list. Green Bay makes the list of being one of the worst crowds to go to. And I'm shocked because this is supposed to be a good town, man. I don't know how they were so bad this week. They're really, really bad. Um, they So Goldberg comes out, talks about uh, Evans or Owen Evans. Owens' promo uh, next week or last week. We got, also got J- uh, Juggy joining the chat, by the way. Raw is Reigns. Thank you. Uh, did you join the chat there, Brandon? Is yeah, that you? I'm going to talk to them. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, Green Bay, terrible crowd. It's been added to the list. Okay. The list. Yeah, the Green list. Uh, talking about Kevin Owens promo last week. Says he has six, he's six days out and will basically win the Universal Championship at uh, Fast Nine. I hope not. I pray to God they don't make Goldberg win the title, man. I hope something happens, just something, and they actually go through with Jericho versus Owens, title for title. Could you imagine they do that? <laughs> title for title, Owens and Jericho. I would fucking love that. I just don't. I think they're going to give it to Oldberg. Oh, he doesn't need it. Oh. They already have a match set up for him at WrestleMania. Why add the title? Because they want Lesnar to take it from him at Stupid. WrestleMania. Stupid, and Lesnar's not going to... Oh, my God. And they're going to completely forget about the whole 30-day defending it rule. And then people are going to get pissed. Like, they're just asking for the internet fans to blow up on them when they could be doing the right thing and calming them down. Anyways, Kevin Owens comes out. He's in a suit again, uh, which I like. I like a suited champion, okay? I, I really like a champion that comes out with a suit on. I think it's I think it's a good idea. You don't want to come out looking, you know, crappy like Roman Reigns where you have it hanging off your back. Or and you look, like you're, you, you look like you're a fucking armored guard going to a bank to collect the money. <laughs> um, Kevin Owens promised that he would take WWE by the throat. That he took WWE. Uh, he promised WWE he'd take him by the throat and make him see who Owens is all about. And he's done that by – he starts naming off the people he's uh, defeated – uh, AJ Styles, John Cena, Dean Ambrose, Ro- uh, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, the big dog. So, you know what? He's right here. Owens is completely right on what he said here in this promo. If you look at what Kevin Owens has done since debuting in WWE, crazy. And uh, Owens then says, Goldberg is next. Not in Goldberg fashion, but he's next to be in the evolution of Kevin Owens. Is this another hint? Is he dropping another hint? Yes. Evolution. And then last what, the week before, it was last week he said uh, he knows how to play the game. Something's <laughs> going on here. Ooh. I can't wait for this faction, man. It's gonna be sick. Um, Owens says Goldberg. Yeah, okay, so I said that. Goldberg calls out Owens to the ring. Owens says, "Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Let's go, Green Bay Street Fight." <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that like what they do at live events? Whatever city they're in, they just put the city name in front of the word "Street Fight." Yeah. <laughs> Hamilton Street Fight. Yeah. Uh, but then Green Bay ain't worthy of it, Kevin Owens said. Perfect heel tactic here. Uh, Owens then says, at fast lane, the Goldberg chants die. Junkie Brown says, for the love of God, please at least be a 10-minute match for the Universal title. <laughs> yeah, right. It's going to be five minutes tops, and it's gonna, either going to be the co-main event or before the co-main event. <laughs> the main event is Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman, okay? This is a raw-branded pay-per-view, not SmackDown. <laughs> Vince wants his two boys in the main event. It's going to be... I'm guaranteeing you guys right now it's Reigns and Braun Strowman. Guaranteed. Especially if Taker comes out at the end of it. Yeah, guaranteed. Uh, <laughs> this feud, though, Michael Chow had it right. It's very, very anticlimactic. It mostly surrounded Owens and Jericho up until now. I really just don't give a shit about it. I don't either. Um, and that's sad because it has a Universal Championship in place. Uh, and Kevin Owens tried to do it with that promo last week where he was in the middle of the ring. But, yeah. but I, I'm still going to go behind that there's a way that Goldberg might not win. <laughs> You're praying to I'm God. I'm praying to God he doesn't win. <laughs> okay. Pray to uh, Sister Abigail. He'll wait. Yeah. So, yeah, I just don't give a shit. <laughs> don't give a shit. It's sad. My boy's in there and the Universal title. I, I can't give a shit. We'll move on. Oh, God. We've got New Day. And they come out with new T-shirts. Uh, they're in ice cream bars called New Day Pops, a mouthful of magic. I gotta have it. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't. Is that it. even PG? Can he say that? <laughs> a mouthful of magic. I gotta have it. <laughs> Kofi Kingston, man. I was. I, I thought that was the only funny part of this whole thing. Um, 
And they say they got to take on the shining stars or take the shine off the, the shining stars. Okay. Neat. So the shining stars come out. But New Day have, they have some ring guy come in and give him a letter. I guess this is a whole Oscar joke. Of course, W's got to be in the spotlight. They got to stay mainstream, right? They got to do an Oscar joke. Uh, <laughs> they tell the shining stars that they actually have a match tonight with the big show. Oh, are you kidding me? Is that – I'm like, is this actually true? Are they actually facing the big show? Please tell me it's a joke. <laughs> I thought they were Match joking. Match of the night. No, instead they have to face <laughs> Handsome Rusev and Steroid, or the new name, Hard-Bodied Mahal. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, he's a Hard-Bodied hard Mahal. We all know why he's hard-bodied. Darby is deliberately telling us he's on steroids by calling him Hard-Bodied Mahal. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Unfucking believable. Hard body Mahal. What the fuck am I watching here? <laughs> Ransom Rusev and Hard Body Mahal. Bring back Babushka. Oh my crap. god, Babushka would be better. Te- better. Te- I can't even talk about this shit. The match, I don't give a shit. Don't care. Nothing. It does nothing for everyone. Anyone. This match. It was such a filler at the beginning of the show. Why do you need filler at the beginning of the show? Why? How how does New Day go from being the longest reigning tag team champions to this nonsense? Mahal got distracted from Rusev, okay, arguing with Kofi Kingston, and Xavier gets the win with this ridiculous roll up. I don't care. I honestly don't care. Couldn't give two shits about anything here. Nothing progressed anything out of this. So Maybe. are New Day in a feud with Hardbody and I Handsome hope, Rusev? Fuck, I hope not. No, because it can't be. They're going to WrestleMania. And they had no match. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> I got nothing to say about that. We'll I, I'm glad I didn't see that. Yeah, we got a couple of backstage segments here. We got start off with Enzo and Cash. In this segment, guys, I honestly don't know. Uh, they're talking about the tag team title match on uh, Sunday. Enzo was just like, did he take lines of coke before this? Like, he was more cringe than usual. I don't know what was going on. He just he he seemed like. Was he partying with the Mojo Raleigh? Did he take 18 Red Bulls before this promo? Because I couldn't. Even Cash was getting annoyed trying to calm him down. Like, yeah, I gotta. I, he's like, I gotta focus on my match. You gotta calm down. He's just going nuts, and then Cash <laughs> leaves the room. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Yeah, great. And move on. We got Cesaro and Sheamus talking backstage. They're talking about uh, how uh, they lost their title opportunity. Uh, Samoa Joe shows up, and he's talking about uh, Cesaro and his history together. I'm going. Oh, this is intriguing. Joe says he walked into the WWE, or he, he said Cesaro is still trying to grab those brass rings as Joe walked into the WWE with them around his neck. And then Cesaro says, oh, that's very clever, a brass ring speech. The only thing that you came into WWE wrapped around your neck is Triple H's jockstrap. Hang on. Woo-hoo! Michael Chow, interrupting the podcast like Roman interrupts Raw. Oh, great. Yeah, I'm not playing. I don't have a Roman Reigns sound bit. So I'm not going to play Roman Reigns' sound bit no, Welcome here. to the chat, Michael Chow. Yeah, Michael to the ch- Yeah, welcome to the chat. Um, but yeah, Cesaro and Sheamus talking to each other here. Uh, I'm like, okay, this is intriguing. Um, it, the great line of Cesaro saying that, uh, instead of a uh, brass rings around his neck, that Samoa Joe's wearing Triple H's jockstrap around his oh. neck. <laughs> this was intense. So I guess this was setting up a match for later on and we found it was true. And I'm like, okay, something good. And I could look forward to on Monday night raw Cesaro versus Samoa Joe. And we'll get into that later. Then we get another backstage. We get three backstage segments leading right after the other. So we got Stephanie and uh, Stephanie McMahon and Mick Foley. Uh, Stephanie started to apologize to Mick Foley, started building him up, talking about all his accolades. And then quickly, just like that, uh, said that's not the Mick Foley that she sees. She apologizes for putting Mick Foley in a position where he would have to stand everything, but that he couldn't even stand at all. So, again, teasing more deception between Mick Foley and Stephen McMahon. And if the current rumors are true, uh, Mick Foley will be gone for being SmackDown GM. Raw GM. Or Raw GM by the Raw after WrestleMania. So he's going to be fired? Yeah. Uh, and that's due to him getting hip surgery and taking time off after. So that's all right. Uh, we get Cruiserweight action. Akira Tozawa versus Noam Dar. We had before this... Uh, Brian Kendrick uh, delivering a promo about, uh, he goes, one, 
and he shows uh, what he did to Tozawa on Raw last week. Two, what he did to Tozawa on 205 Live, you guys didn't see that. He, They're both outside the ring. He made his foot get tied up underneath the ring so that when he went back into the ring, Tozawa got counted out. And then the promo cut there. So, and it was announced after this that Fastlane, the kickoff match is going to be Rich Swan and Tozawa versus Kendrick and Noem Dar. Okay, we can argue about this, but isn't this a, a pre-show match you actually want to see? I guess, yeah, because we're not going to get something moves. like Tyson O'Neil versus the Shining Stars in a handicap match. <laughs> we're going to get an actual one that we're going to want to see and it'll be excited for. I guess that's a type of pre-show match you use to get the crowd into the pay-per-view. I agree. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fuck Craig. Ah. 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 I don't understand. I, I don't. I'm not liking uh, his whole ha thing, but yeah, whatever. This Stephanie Foy who's taking up much of JBL's cruiserweight now. <laughs> 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 Uh, it's true or so, but into the match we go. Really good showing by Tozawa here, actually. There was a lot of good spots. There's the one really, like, in- intense spot where he did, like, a suicide dive through the ropes, but he, him and uh, Noam Dar headbutted each other on the outside, which is really, really good spot. Really well done. Uh, Tozawa wins with a snap German suplex. After the match, Kendrick comes from behind, attacks Tozawa, and says that is the third thing. So we got the one and the two in the, in the promo beforehand. It's number three. So... The, the rivalry between Tazawa and Noam Dar is, or Tazawa and uh, Brian Kedrick is heating up a lot. <laughs> you know, look at that. 205 Live produces better content than Monday Night Raw. Shocker. Chucky uh, Brown puts Raw as segments <laughs> instead of Raw's war. God. Uh, <laughs> backstage. We got another backstage segment. Shocker. Here we go. Samoa Joe and Mick Foley. Foley tells Samoa Joe that he sees him as Triple H's puppet. Samoa Joe is like, I ain't no puppet. And before he basically points out, you know, you do what he says, you do what he, you say what he wants you to say. You're, well, I can't find any other word but puppet. And Joe tells him that he nobody tells him what to do. Before he tells Joe, as long as I'm GM, you're gonna listen. You're gonna do what I tell you to do, and you're gonna have a match tonight against Cesaro. Thank you, McFoley. Thank Christ, you're saving the show somewhat. Uh, sometimes, sometimes. This week for sure. Next. We got Charlotte and Nia Jax. Well, we find out Nia Jax oh. a little bit after versus Bailey and Sasha Banks. Oh my God! So how this all starts out? We got Charlotte coming out with Dana Botch. Great. Did she did I, she already, botch on her way to the ring again? I don't know. I I don't want to pay attention to her because like she's irrelevant on TV for me. Uh, Michael shows us the cruiserweight should wrestle the Raw superstars because what's the point of two hundred five live then? Yeah. Uh, I think someone said that last week or something. Yeah, they should be fighting uh, regular superstars. I don't know why. I know you're trying to keep 205 exclusive, but if you are, again, like he just said, if you're going to put them on Raw, fight Raw superstars. It doesn't make any sense. What, so they can all get squashed by No Man Gains? Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, you can look at it that way, too. Yeah. Anyway, Charlotte Dana Botch. We got Charlotte on the mic. Sound like a fucking robot, man. Just... She sounds so scripted, it's hilarious, man. She, it sounds like she's looking at cue cards, and I'm reading this for my promo on Monday Night Raw. My name is Charlotte. I am the fu- former and future woman's champion. <laughs> God awful. Uh, I think talks... she wants to like have that confident persona and act. It's not confident. It just sounds like shit. You look at what Ric Flair, her dad's done, and he... Again, like our boy JD said this in his review. He said that Ric Flair spoke from the soul. He, that guy put all his heart into his promos. Charlotte just sounds like she's reading from a cue card. She's got to put more into it. And again, all these women in this segment did more in NXT. They got more freedom in NXT than they do now. It's terrible how much they're being held back. I don't know. Anyways, uh, she's talking about Bailey not turning over the title last week and calling her greedy. And then starts calling her one-hit wonder and starts naming all these one-hit wonder bands. I'm like, okay, who cares? What does this fucking have to do with anything? Then Bailey comes out finally, and she comes in. She starts talking about how she beat Charlotte three times, blah, 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 blah. Thanks, Universe, for helping her make the right decision last week. Oh, it just sucks, man. I can't get behind this freaking division. It's the same crap every different week. I don't understand. So that her next dream, and she points to WrestleMania sign, like, that's not fucking clever enough, or that's not different. Everyone points that thing. Curtis Axel pointed yeah, to and it. She walks into, uh, she, her next dream is to walk into WrestleMania as the new women's champion. 
Ooh, well, she already is the women's or as champion. The women, sorry, as the women's champion. I don't know why I write new here. Uh, Charlotte says she's gonna uh, she's gonna buy Bailey's dad a front row ticket for Fastlane to watch Charlotte crush her dreams. And as she says that, Sasha Banks comes out, and I don't know, I forget what she says, but it was something relevant. And I hate face Sasha, so I don't care. <laughs> uh, Charlotte says you must. Then Charlotte says you must be exhausted. Okay, this line right here, what Sasha said gold this is heel sasha right here so charlotte says you must be exhausted from stealing bailey's spotlight sasha then says you you must be exhausted from looking at our i am exhausted but i'm exhausted at looking at sh your stupid face uh i guess it was good it was They're... heelish i i liked it at first at first i'm like ah oh, it's a good one it's a good one uh juggy brown says charlotte will be 16 time champ by the end of the year i wouldn't division. doubt it yeah. She's already Michael, four times. Michael Chalice says, no explanation for Dana Botch's disappearance and explanation for her reappearance. Will Ric Flair start managing Charlotte for no reason? <laughs> Hashtag Raw Logic. Probably. <laughs> They'll probably forget the whole incident with, Raw, with Ric Flair and Charlotte. They'll probably just, again, Derby thinks we're fucking idiots sometimes <laughs> and thinks we just forget shit. <laughs> I don't know. Like the Bella's The casual dude? people forget everything. We won't. Um... <laughs> So Sasha says, let's get their match going and underway like they're supposed to. And Charlotte goes, my partner isn't my protege, Dana Brooke. My partner is. And, like, she's making it suspenseful. Like, we don't know who the fuck's just about to come out here. <laughs> who else is going to come out of the Emma? curtain right now? Emma? She has nothing to do with this. Some who else race? do they have? Some race. I, hate, I hated that. Why? Why, oh, why did they make this so suspenseful? Just the same garbage with everybody interrupting everybody and yep. the same four people being involved. The same crap every week. And Nia Jax comes out. Oh, wow. Fuck, I had no idea she's going to come out. Shocker. I, would, shocker. I wouldn't want Dana Brooke as a partner either. One thing I noticed, and someone, I forget who pointed it out, that when she said this person and Nia Jax's music hit, Dana kind of gave a disgusted look to Charlotte. Like, what the fuck? I thought I was going to be your partner. I don't know if that's teasing anything or it was just done like that because... They had, Dana Brooke has nothing else to do, then whatever. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the match was all right until Nia Jax got tagged in, and then it became a squash match. Yeah. And she killed Bailey and Sasha. She literally just destroyed she, Bailey and she Sasha. She body slammed Sasha onto Bailey, yeah. and then gave Bailey that wicked leg drop where her thigh is massive. Yeah. It actually looked like it suffocated Bailey under that. But thigh. a lot, so there's a lot of criticism with this, and people saying, oh, yeah, okay, Bailey's a champion. She gets squashed, and Sasha used to be done, and now she gets squashed. This actually makes sense, though, and they're actually doing something right with the division for once. Because would you rather have Nia Jax squashing jobbers? No. You'd rather have her squashing the competition. Those are the competition. And I think they did this, and it makes her – they did it the right way to make Nia Jax look strong to be they're trying to build able to Nia put Jax. her into the fatal yeah. four-way at WrestleMania. Makes her look credible to be up with yeah. the other three. I guarantee you she turns on Charlotte in the upcoming weeks, and she does the same thing to Charlotte. She's going to be like her own thing. Like No one's going to be on her side. She's going to be her own girl. And in saying that, uh, Sasha has done a lot of teasing lately uh, that she's going to turn on Bailey. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I am praying to God it happens soon. Oh, me soon. too. I fucking love it. I can get um, behind your girl there. I can't get behind this shit. Like, just the way she's been looking at Bailey in backstage segments and, like, Same the way with she's Bailey. I can't get her... behind my girl either because she's just cringe, man. It's ter They're not letting – they're not giving them creative freedom. They're letting them read from a script. That's what they're letting yeah. them do. But uh, I see it like the, the it's snowballing into the turn eventually. Like every week, we, we're seeing Sasha kind of look at Bailey a, a different way. So yeah. I'm hoping maybe Sunday we'll see. Uh, Michael Schaub with Charlotte changes ta her tag partner. Jericho accepts Goldberg's challenge for the title. Do the wrestlers make the matches now? <laughs> Raw GM, go home. <laughs> and Greg puts hashtag Raw Logic. Yeah, pretty much. All right, we got another backstage segment. Another shocker. Uh, Foley and Strowman. <laughs> this is kind of funny. Foley says he's got no competition for Strowman. He needs to calm down, of course. Because Strowman's always looking for competition. Uh, Strowman wants a contract signing for some reason. So that the big dog can't run and tuck his tail. And then Foley's like, I don't see how he would because he's the one that actually wants to fight you. But okay, we'll make a contract signing. And then Strowman's like, he wants Roman Reigns' name on the dotted line. Or else... Or else, or else the what? way Braun says You're it. You're going to do Stephen McMahon a favor and then Raw's going to be the same crap it always is? You're not doing anyone a favor. Okay? Sick, Braun Strowman. Cool. All right. We'll move on here. Luke Gallo's big cast. Don't care. 
I really don't care, man. I was really hoping the club would at least look some sort of strong going into Sunday. But no, they didn't. Cass basically squashes Luke Gallows here. Great. So in the last month, the club get killed by Roman Reigns and job to Enzo and Cass. Great. I don't want to talk about it anymore. We're moving on. Uh, Tyus O'Neill and Sheamus and everything I don't want to fucking talk about. So one cringe segment after the other. Um, Craig says, what is or else? I don't know. Or else maybe he leaves Raw. That'd be a blessing. Yeah, he, we always hear Braun saying the Foley threatening him or else. But has he done anything or else? No. It's not really credible. I don't see. I'm not scared, Braun. I'm not scared. <laughs> Unless he stands in front of me, then I'll yeah. be scared shitless. <laughs> Anyways, Tyus O'Neil. This so Tyus O'Neil and Sheamus have a match here. It all started from a backstage or a Facebook video from earlier in the day. All right, so O'Neil and Sheamus are arguing and catering after Titus wanting to team together. That's it. That's how they had this match tonight. Right there. <laughs> it's cra It's crazy. So, I don't understand. Um, is Braun going to take Foley out to eat or something? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Um, That's brutal. Yeah, brutal. Um, ugh. I, I, I can't talk about this match. I, can, I honestly cannot talk about this match. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, something's going on in my podcast right now. I got I got to take a break. I'm gonna let Michael uh, or gonna let Corporate Cappy here take over. Um, uh, for God, actually, hang on. I'm getting the, the messages right now. Sorry, guys. A little, little something on the. Uh, we're live here, you know. We no. do it live. Okay. I'll right, so, I'll be right back. Yeah. So right. corporate cabbie's got to go move his car. Sorry. I don't want to talk about Braun Strowman anyway. So <laughs> I'll talk about this. All right. Corporate cabbie, we'll be right back. I'll keep talking, ladies and gentlemen. See, this is what we do. We do stuff live right in the air. All right. I'll keep talking about it. So, you guys let me know out there what you guys think of this. I hear that, oh, I guess it's true now, that Jack Swagger has asked for his release from WWE, and I think he's granted it. So, is Tyrus O'Neill replacing Jack Swagger in the catering? <laughs> I hope, I think that's what this is. I think the WWE the, is silently telling us that Jack Swagger is the one... The leave and Tyson Neal is the one to take his place in the catering. Okay. Well then. Uh, Juggy Brown, you put Monday Night Cringe. Yes, it is Monday Night Cringe. Greg also puts the new name for Monday Night Raw is No Man Gains and Friends featuring Derby. Oh, God. <laughs> Swagger. Oh, yeah, reunite. I heard that. I, I think I read that today that Swagger and Coulter reuniting. Guys, if you're wondering how I'm reading everyone's uh, chat messages here, they're, they're chatting on Spreaker. Right now, so if you want, go create an account on Spreaker, and you can go. You don't have to put your real name or anything. Just put it in, and you can chat with us while we're live on the air, and we'll talk about anything you guys say. So, Michael Shaw says, "This is what happens when you watch Raw. Raw ruins your life. Good luck, Cappy. <laughs> yeah, uh, Cappy's just going to move his car. We had to bring uh, my dad's car into the driveway, and my Cappy has his car in my driveway, so we had to just go move it. So, sorry, he'll be back in a couple seconds." Uh, what is Monday Night Raw, Greg? I thought the show was called Roman Reigns. <laughs> yeah, Monday Night Raw is called Reigns Always Wins. That's what Monday Night Raw is. Reigns Always Wins. Now, anyways, uh, Tyus O'Neil and Sheamus. Uh, do we have a match because of the whole Facebook thing? Great. Um, can someone say filler? This was complete filler. It was. <laughs> Titus attacked Sheamus before the match. As soon as they get in the ring, Sheamus bro kicks Titus out of nowhere. What? And then Sheamus wins. This was completely useless. If you guys went to the bathroom and we got food during this, you didn't miss much. You missed Sheamus getting a match with Titus O'Neil. This match could have been on Superstars. But no, they don't put it on Superstars. We get it on Monday Night Raw. Titus oh. O'Neil versus Sheamus. Oh, we got Cappy Cappy. Talking about the Titus brand? Yeah, we're, I'm done now. The I dummy brand? It. The dummy brand. The filler brand. This was all filler. I, I actually saw this match where I was, and it looked horrific. It didn't even happen. It was like they attacked each other before the, the bell, and then they got in the ring, bro kick for the win. 
And what about the, the catering segment backstage? Titus O'Neil's yeah, new Ty, job. Ty, I said this. Titus O'Neil is replacing Jack Swagger oh, in catering. Okay. Uh, Greg also puts uh, that uh, maybe a uh, Jack Swagger and Zeb Coulter reunion in TNA. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what TNA does. They, they take back old stars or people that quit the company. That's all they do. They, that's how they get to try to get uh, famous. But, you know, they fail at that. So we'll move on here. That Corporate Cappy is back. Uh, Craig says he was sleeping during this match. <laughs> Good. You didn't miss much. <laughs> Hope he woke up for this. Seth Rollins in-ring segment. Uh, he comes out with a brace and one crutch, and I'm hearing that, uh, that someone actually seen Seth Rollins in a hotel. They were working at a hotel where he was staying, and he was walking without a crutch. He still had the brace, but he's walking fine without the crutch. So the, the limping and the crutch thing is a work. So it was like the Sasha Banks thing where she carried yeah, around basically. the crutch. Oh. Uh, he's getting interviewed by Corey Graves in the ring, and he starts talking about uh, the rehab and how bad the injury is and where Seth Rollins' head is at. Um, although it looked like, although it looked like Rollins was upset, it didn't feel like he was telling the truth. Like he was actually legitimately upset. It very, it felt to me a little bit acted out. I don't know if anyone else felt that. It just, he did, he gave some emotion, but I don't think it was real. It almost, like he, it was forced. I don't know. It's just my opinion. Um, if they're trying to make it look like he's going to be out of WrestleMania, I'd be more upset than what he was. Like, I would want to talk about it. Um... Grace asks if he will actually be at WrestleMania. So the question comes out. Ron says, uh, right now it doesn't look great, and the doctors uh, most likely won't clear him in time for Mania. And then a random CM Punk chant happens here. Why? Why I, was there a CM Punk chant? CM Punk chants are just irrelevant. This to is me. how dead the crowd was, and how bored they were, I guess. Terrible, Green Bay. Terrible. He was irrelevant to this situation, and you chanted CM Punk. That was fantastic. Um, out comes Triple H, and he's got the biggest freaking smirk on his face, man. Huge. And Samoa Joe ends up coming behind him through the crowd, uh, behind him at ringside. So some, I'm going, oh god, shit, something's gonna happen here. Triple H says you will not be at WrestleMania, and if you know what's good, if you know what's good for you, you won't show up there. He also asked if, uh, you know. If you're now just now coming to the realization that you deserve this, Triple H says you made the man, or I, I made you the man. I made you the faith, and I made you the WWE World Champion, and that Triple H did that for him. Samoa Joe then climbs onto the apron here at this point. I'm going, oh shit, shit's about to go down. Triple H says Rollins bit the hand that feeds him, and so what I used, and so what I used you and spit, and so what I used you and spit you out. Triple H says he's the past, not the future, just a washed up, beat up superstar that's worthless and too and too salvage and to salvage what he has left. Tells him to make the right decision and do not show up at WrestleMania or go to WrestleMania to call out Triple H because Triple H swears it will be the last thing he will ever do in a WWE ring. So Ooh. really, really, really good promo by Triple H here. Um, it sounded it, very, very intense. It, it brought me back to when like how intense Triple H was. Uh, when the Undertaker called him out for a second WrestleMania, and then it finally got him to accept it, and how intense Triple H was, and also brought me back to like when Triple H and uh, CM Punk got really intense in their feud. Um, so I like the intensity out of Triple H here. It's it's building the match between Seth Rollins and Triple H. Um, he tells him to make uh, the right decision and do not show up at WrestleMania, and calls Triple H. Okay, I said that already. So Rollins yells back at Triple H at this point. Tells him he's not going to do... He's got nothing left to lose, and he's going to be at WrestleMania. Swears that if it's the last thing he ever does, it will be the last thing Triple H ever does as well. Um, at this point, I was waiting for a Samoa Joe attack or something, but no. Triple That's, H and Joe just walk away. I was watching this where I was watching it, and uh, or like I was catching it in the corner of my eye at uh, where I was at. Yeah. And... Um, it look. I was like, are they gonna attack him? Yeah. Like, what is going on? I, I look back like ten minutes later. I'm like, they're very, still in the ring. Yeah. I think it's very anticlimactic, but I think there would be. A, a, I was pissed at it at first. I'm like, okay, maybe they're just actually scared. They don't want to hurt Seth Rollins again. <laughs> I know, but like, yeah. I literally looked at it. Yeah. Three times, and I couldn't hear what they were saying. The volume wasn't on, but yeah. I saw it, and I'm looking, and Joe's behind him, and Triple H yeah. is there, and I'm like, you guys really can't attack a guy on a crutch. Yeah. Who it, are you? 
Yeah, and then Michael Chow says, "Why was Joe out there? He did nothing." Exactly, it made him he, look weak. And, and it, two it, guys he, he can't was, attack one guy on a crush. Was, again, he kind of was hypocritical because earlier in the show, he's like, "Triple H doesn't control me. I'm not. I'm not his puppet." What the hell were you just doing there? You're following him. You could have just beat the shit out of Seth without yeah. Triple H leaving. I don't understand. It made zero. It made them look weak as hell. Yeah, yeah. How, who? What two guys do you know that wouldn't beat up on a guy on a crutch if they Especially had an Triple H? Especially uh, two goons like yeah. that. <laughs> Craig says he's seen the chaperone three times and is more watchable than Raw. I haven't seen it once. I, I haven't seen it once. On I don't know if I want once. to watch it. I think I'd rather watch uh, the one. What was the one with Big Show? Knuckleheads. Remember no, Big Show God. was in the diaper. There's a lot of really. I want to make a list of like worst WWE studio films, man. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot. Uh, so yeah, I guess I guess it just be. It just meant that I didn't want to attack Seth Rollins and hurt him even more. Um. But there's a lot of people out there that are, are, are still kind of dissing the Triple H and Seth Rollins match. I actually still want to see that. A lot of people wanted to see that in the past. Remember when this whole feud was starting to build? People wanted to see that. Why all of a sudden did they change their minds? I want to see Triple H and Seth Rollins. That'd be a sick match. I think they can put up a good match. Triple H still has it. He's still physically able to put up a good match. What do you guys out there in the chat still think? you guys still want to see Seth Rollins versus Triple H? Let us know. Uh, and while you guys let us know, I'm going to move on here. <laughs> Big Show versus The Shining Stars. Oh my god, what a match. The world's largest tweener athlete in history. And with the recent rumors of Shaq versus Big Show not happening, we get this match. <laughs> yeah. Match of the night? He squashed him. All done. That's all I want to say. That's all I got to say. And uh, Craig wants to see Triple H for Seth. Thank you. I want to see that match too. I, as long as Seth is healthy enough to do it. Yeah. If Seth is like 50%, then no. I don't yeah. want to see him get hurt again. Yeah, me either. I, it's, At this it's, point, Rollins it's, it's gonna be, is... It's literally going to come down. It's like a game time decision. So we'll see. <clears throat> How this big show have abs? I don't know. Maybe they're drawn. Austin Aries, he introduces his own return promo. So we get a return package for Austin Aries coming back to the ring soon. Cannot wait for that. And if the rumors are true, he'll be setting up a feud with Neville. So Austin Aries coming back as a face. Interesting. Mm. Get a cruiserweight match here. TJ Perkins and Jack Gallagher versus Neville and Tony Nese. And before that, we got an answer from Michael Chow. No, please not. Triple H would have had... Would have had Russell two out of three members of the Shield. Spoiler alert: WrestleMania 2018, Triple H versus Dean Ambrose with special ref Roman Reigns. Yeah, but I feel like they need to have this match because yeah, Triple H just, turned on Rollins as his boy. Yeah, this match needs to happen, though. They need the to get Triple it out H of the Roman way. match didn't need to happen. This match needs to happen. Yeah. Um. So into the cruiserweight match: Neville and Tony Neat or CJ Tony Perkins Neat, my and boy. Jack Gallagher, the uh, the premier athlete. Yeah. Tony Neat's abs. Yeah. Right. Uh, very good match though. It still wasn't enough time, as per usual. It's like four minutes. Gallagher had knees in a submission move that I've never seen before. Crazy. And uh, a lot of people don't know, Jack Gallagher is a MMA fighter. So he has a lot of moves in his repertoire. Neville had a chance to save Nice, but he actually backed out of the ring and just watched as Nice tapped out. See? Gallagher. That's why Tony Nice needs to have his regular partner, the Philadelphia Torture Machine, or whatever he called himself, God. Drew Gulak. Where's he at? Gulak. I don't know where Gulak is. <laughs> The Gulak. Philadelphia torture machine. Raw is gulacking Drew Gulak. <laughs> uh, get a Beth Phoenix announcement. She's the next inductee into the Hall of Fame. Sure. She was Dio from like what, 2008, 2010? And she's she was, in the Hall of Fame. She was Good pretty for dominant her, I guess. back then for yeah. that era. But she eliminated uh, Great Khali in the Royal Rumble. She kissed him over the top rope. Sure. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> backstage segment again. Uh, Sasha and Bailey are all banged up with ice packs. Like, did it even look that bad? Why do they have ice packs on? Like, massive ice packs. I'm talking about, like, the big bags you get from the corner store. Why? Hey, I'll give them an ice pack if they need it. <laughs> Anyways, Steph comes up behind Sasha while she's saying she's going to be at ringside for Bailey's match at Fastlane. Uh, Stephanie says, oh, no. Oh, no. No, she didn't say it like that, but... Uh, tell Sasha wow. that she'll have a match at, instead at Fastlane. And what if, well, I wonder who she's going to face. Mm. Who? 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 Nia Jax. Again, we <laughs> saw this at Royal Rumble in the pre-show, <laughs> and it was so good that we have to see it again. Neat. That's all I had to say about that. 
awful. The only good thing that came out of this backstage segment that I saw was that Sasha gave Bailey a heelish look. Mm-hmm. That was it. That's, That's the it. only good thing that comes out of this. I agree. So we have Samoa Joe versus Cesaro. Pretty decent match. Wish it was longer. Only five minutes does the match last in. Five minutes. I totaled it. This match needs to go the distance one day, though. It would definitely be a four-star match without a doubt. I'm going to hold it right there. Michael Chow puts Sasha says she has Bailey's back at Fastlane. Yeah. She's going to turn Hashtag her back. heels Sasha is coming. Yes. Please. Yeah, I agree. Uh, anyway, Cesaro and Joe match was pretty decent. I still think it should go longer one day. They definitely could put up a four or four or four and a half. You know, something like that. Close 4.4, four and a half star match. Joe wins with a Uranagi slam. Is this a new finisher? Hmm. What What's his finisher? A uh, Uranagi slam. Basically what Bray Wyatt uses as a signature move. What, you mean the, uh, yeah, Uranagi, Ezekiel? He, like, he throws him up against the rope oh. and he caught him like this and then basically almost like a rock bottom kind of thing. The kind book, of like a book of Ezekiel. book yeah. of Ezekiel? Yeah, okay. Uranagi slam. All right. I'm okay with that. But are they not letting Joe use the uh, muscle so. buster? Probably not. <laughs> Uh, Samoa Joe getting interviewed on stage after the match. Joe says he's come here to hurt people. Says Cesaro is not Samoa Joe, and this served as a reminder to everybody in the back. It doesn't matter who you are and how much these people love you. Cesaro, Sami Zayn, Seth Rollins, and then Sami Zayn's music cuts them off. Blindsides Joe the same way that he that Joe did last week. Uh, Zayn with a cool spot here with a swanton off the stage and hits uh, Joe into all the security and then they all separate them by the refs and the, the fake security guards and that's it and then I guess it just adds some intensity to the Joe and Zayn match heading into Sunday. I think that's match is probably the only one I'm going to look forward to on Sunday is that one. Uh, Joe and Zayn. Yeah, I think I I want them to have a good match. They didn't fight yeah. in NXT, which is unfortunate, but. I, I want um, I'm sure really they've fought in, on the independent scene before. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Main event is a contract signing for Raw. And you can't have Raw with the main focus of these two awful guys, Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. Awful. Man, I'm just, glad I didn't see this. fucking awful. So the main event, if Fastlane, is going to be these guys. It's going to be. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be these guys. Uh, Strowman comes out and tells Foley to leave. His, his job is done here. He has a table and a contract out for them. Strowman says he won't respect Foley because he is not the man he used to be. Foley then gets like really, really intense here. This is where I love McFoley in this segment. Uh, Foley then gets into Strowman's face, like right up into it. And, and damn it, Foley just looked really, really good. And says, uh, you will look at Foley as a legend and respect him as a legend or else. So McFoley is the one that says or else to Braun Strowman. I really, really love this part. And then Roman slaps the mic out of Foley's hands, and then right on cue, ban it, ban it. Oh, uh, yeah, and right on cue. No man gains fucking comes out. They start brawling with each other. <laughs> There's the one spot here where Strowman throws Reigns over the steps. But, like, Roman Reigns, avoid. I think he's afraid of steps. Because he, like, jumped over the steps as in, like, he meant to dodge them. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think Roman Reigns is afraid of stairs. <laughs> Um, he comes back with a Superman punch. Oh, Prince Jones has joined the chat. (laughs) I'm not even going to read that. Just finished watching porn. Interesting. That's probably better than Monday Night Raw. (laughs) I think there was earlier in the chat someone, I think it was, uh, I'll find it in a minute. Go ahead. Uh, Strowman gets up. Or no, sorry. They start brawling all over the arena, through the crowd. Uh, there's the one spot where Rain Spears Strowman through the barricade. And like, there's a security guard there. And he got absolutely owned, man. He, was it worse than John Cone taking the bro kick? I think it was worse than that. I don't, I don't know. That was pretty bad, too. This security guard gets destroyed. Like, Corey Graves mentions it after. Oh. Um, too bad they didn't, they didn't make Tom Phillips take it as yeah. punishment. Speaking God. of that, it was your boy Juggy Brown said, LOL, New Day just made it to Monday Night Brazzers. God. <laughs> oh, that was because of the whole uh, New Day pop thing. Uh, Strowman gets up. Though from the spear, looking all strong, says, "That's all you got." Well, whatever, Strowman. <laughs> he gets in the ring, gets Superman punches, and Stro or Reigns tries for a spear, and then Strowman grabs him and it throws him as hard as he can into the turnbuckle, and it like explodes. I never seen this before. The turnbuckle like exploded onto Roman's chest, like blew up. That was crazy. I think that was a crazy spot. 
I enjoy that spot right there. That's the only spot I liked about this entire thing. But of course, we need to make Roman look strong too. He crawls towards the contract and signs it. He crawled to the he contract. He crawled to the contract, got up on the table like, oh, oh, oh shit. Grabs a contract, signs it. Yeah, I'm going to see you out fast lane. Okay. Great. Great Roman Reigns. Do y'all hear JD is scared of me? Is he? Scared of you? Scared of who? Prince Jones. Prince Jones says JD is scared of him. Oh. Why, what did you do? Did you roar in his face, J Prince did... Jones? <laughs> <laughs> what? Did you roar at him? Did, did you tweet at him or something? Did you? Did you get? Are you a blocked member? Are you blocked yeah. by JD? Please are you tell benched? Me you're, you're tell me you're benched. a benched member. Yeah, if you're benched by JD, that'd be awesome. Um, <laughs> we tried to get blocked by Dolph Ziggler once. Didn't work. Didn't work. <laughs> uh, Greg says hard body Mahal and handsome Rusev foreign stripper names much to me to me. <laughs> I just I don't care about them. What about give me Lana? That, yeah, that's whoa. what I want. Yeah. Anyways, this is getting way off time. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> Uh, it's not Michael, PG anymore. He's scared as fuck. He blocked me like a fat ass homo. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. You're you're one of the bench members of JD's bench. Wow. All right. Should be in your profile. Yeah. Uh, Roman is so overrated. The turnbuckle wanted a piece of him. <laughs> Michael Chow. <Chow. laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, All right. Raw I'm... score. I gave it a three out of ten. Two. Standard two. Yeah, that's it. Nothing else really to talk about that. We're going to move on. Yeah, we talk way too much about Monday Night Raw. Yep. All right. Or, sorry, the... hashtag Monday Night Dumpster Fire. Monday Night Snooze Fest. There you go. Uh, let's talk about the blue brand. The A Show. The A Show. Now, if you guys don't know, I have my week off this week from school, but I wasn't home on Tuesday night. I went to watch Sabres play, but I was able to go back and watch it since I didn't have school. And it was good. And it's I'm glad. I'm did. sure glad I went back and watched it. Because yeah. I was entertained through the whole thing. Nick Craig, God damn it, Michael Chow, that was fun. <laughs> Michael Chow, I don't know where He's you get mad. all these oh, one-liners from, man. But Prince John, I ain't going to read that. <laughs> That's a, I know you're mad at JD. I ain't going to read that. That's nice. He has a wife. I didn't know JD was married. He has a wife. I don't know. Anyways. Anyways. Uh, Smackdown, or Smackdown Review. Opening segment, Ms. TV. And this reaction, I'm like, okay, great. But ends up being really good. Guest star is John Cena. Uh, before Steve, Cena even gets on the mic, Miz cuts a promo on him. And a really, really, really well done promo by The Miz. Um, although there are some typical chirps that people have done in the past, but The Miz did it properly and he did a really good job of it. Uh, when Cena finally gets to talk here, he just comes out firing, man. Literally <laughs> the most savage I've seen Cena in a long time. Miz cut Cena off and said, you're yeah. not talking until I <laughs> say you can talk. I love when people do that to Cena, man. It Styles? literally makes me laugh all no, the time. No, but this time, like, they, Miz actually cut Cena's mic off, apparently. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, really, really intense, savage promo by Cena. Probably one of the best ones I've seen since Styles. Uh, he even shot, took a shoot on WWE here. And if you guys missed it, I don't know how you can miss this part, but... He says that he doesn't want to face the Miz at WrestleMania. He'd rather face the Undertaker at WrestleMania. The crowd is going, out. yes, yes, yes. And he's just he's looking, he's putting the mic all around the crowd. Uh, that's a shoot right there, guarantee. I guarantee. I bet you Cena wants to face the Undertaker at WrestleMania but because Undertaker says he wants to face Roman Reigns. He's pissed off about it. Okay, I like that. I can appreciate that by John Cena. Just book it, WWE. Fuck Roman Reigns and Undertaker. Who the hell wants to see that besides Vince and Bugs Bunny back there? Hmm? Unbelievable. Anyways. What happened to SmackDown being... Or what happened to Undertaker being a SmackDown Live guy? Remember when he came back? And he says his home is SmackDown? Where has he been since then? He hasn't made an appearance on SmackDown since then. <laughs> He's been on Raw more than SmackDown after that. It doesn't make any sense. They, they're ru they ruined that. It made zero sense. Yeah. Anyway, Cena tries to leave, but Marie says, no, you can't leave until we tell you to. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Ends up slapping Cena. Cena gets really, or not really pissed off, but gets like a big smirk and says, you shouldn't have done that. And out comes Nikki Bella running to the ring and, you know, right on cue. But what she says after made me like, okay, I kind of want to see this match. <laughs> Nikki, Miz and Maurice run into the crowd. <laughs> Jackie Brown puts Kevin Dunn wants to whack off to that man. Yeah, him and, and Vince in the same production truck. <laughs> Prince Jones wants to see The Undertaker versus Eugene. 
<laughs> no one wants to see that match. Stop it. Anyways, Miss and Maurice run into the crowd. Nikki gets on the mic and says, you mess with my man, I'll break you, bitch. <laughs> I love oh that. Oh, my God. That's the most un-PG thing I've heard Nikki Bell say ever. I don't think she's ever been out of and character And it's funny because like everyone's been, been chirping on her for her fake assets yeah. <laughs> all the time. And both times she finally fought back with something. Oh, my God. And man. then afterwards her and Cena, like, they kiss in the ring. And but that, that one celebrate. line. Yeah. Right there. Good. I'm like, okay, I want to see this match now. If, they, if they're going to continue to do the, this type of feud and continue week after week... Do stuff like this, all for it. Do it. Fucking do it. I'll, I'll love the feud better than the match. Literally. The build That's up. all I'm, I'm only going to love the build. The match, meh. I, w- I was actually a big fan. Of, like, as much as I don't like John Cena, I thought it was a great promo. But this is a good Cena. promo. Well done by both couples here. Loved it. Uh, we'll move on. Becky Lynch versus Mickey James in a two out of three falls match. Wow. So already SmackDown's beaten Raw right after that. Mickey James is getting older by the day and hotter by the day. I My swear to God. My lord. We'll get into that later. <laughs> Mickey James gets a, gets the first fall with the Mickey DT, it's called. I think she used that back in the day. I think so, point. too. Someone knows. Let us know. Uh, as long as Cena is nowhere near the belt. Yeah, he's all for it. Thank you, Prince Jones. I'm all for it, too. Too many commercials, though. They cut the commercial after the first fall. I'm like, they really don't. <laughs> oh, I want... SmackDown has more... I think SmackDown actually has more commercials than Monday Night Raw, and they're only two hours. It's the only bad thing we can say about SmackDown. Literally. It's way too many two commercials. Two out of three falls. Obviously, Mickey wins the first fall. Who yeah. do you think is going to win the second fall? Who? 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 <laughs> so Becky wins with the second fall with a roll-up. Uh, Alexa Bliss uh, comes out at this point and distracts the ref while Becky makes, Becky makes the pinfall and gets two straight pins. Yeah, well, it was because Becky saw, oh, yeah. saw Nikki Alexa. tried to kick yeah, Becky Mich- and missed and yeah. hit. That start, I guarantee that's going to start something in the upcoming Between weeks. Alexa and Mickey, maybe. And try, Mickey tries to roll up. Becky counters it into the disarmor, and Becky wins. Straight fire. Straight fire. We get two straight follows. Wow. Because me and Ocel Phil are watching this, and he's like, okay, this is how this is how a two out of three follows match goes. One wins. One gets the first fall, one gets the second fall. Whoever got the first fall wins with the third fall. And he was shocked that uh, nope. Becky Lynch got the second, the third fall as well. Yeah, so, so and that's that his too. girl. So, uh, Ch- Chucky Brown. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say that either. Uh, anyways, we got backstage promo. Luke Harper and Bray Wyatt each have their own on each other. It was really well done. Good mic work by both of them, and the crowd was really, really behind Bray Wyatt here as well. So, good backstage promo there. And then we also get an Alexa. Backstage promo after what we just great. saw, uh, really good too. Very <laughs> heelish. Like she's such an oh elite my heel God. here. Her just her facial expressions are yeah. just hilarious. Literally, she's just looking at Dasha Fuentes like, yeah. <laughs> "You're asking me about Becky Lynch. You're not asking me about my big title win last yeah. week." And then she's like, "Restart this. Restart it." <laughs> and then Alexa goes, "Oh, you know, oh, oh, thank you. I'm so flattered." And starts. Oh, it's just it's phenomenal. It reminds mm-hmm. me so much of heel Trish back in the day. Yeah. But like elevated now like it's like getting even better than what it used to be i love it i love every aspect uh, natty of it. chimes in and cuts a promo yeah, on Alexa. natty comes out of nowhere yeah. and the face she gave natty then was even the, the, the blissed the off faces blissed man off. they're the wrestling great. bliss face um and natty says i'm gonna take your title yeah so we move on so. and i thought this match was gonna be the main event and ends up not being so we get harper versus styles already i'm like wow. me and phil were like what what already and i'm like okay whatever this is interesting yeah uh, Harper, Harper versus Styles. Winner faces Bray at WrestleMania. Luke, due finally, to Randy Orton giving up his spot. Luke finally has a, a clean white shirt. Yeah. Uh, well, couldn't believe this happening at this point in the show, though. I, I, was, I just read my own reaction. Uh, good match, though. Really, really, really good match. I enjoy it. Luke Harper has impressed me lately. It looks like he's gotten better in the ring. I don't know. Since, he's, since he was gone, we took that extent period of time off. I think he got a little bit better. I think he did a lot more in-ring training because he's looked better and better each day. Um, crowd was split right down the middle for this match. And at one point in the match, Styles hit the phenomenal forearm and wins the match, apparently. But Harper's foot was on the rope. And out comes Shane McMahon. I'm like, oh, my God, no, they're actually going through with this shit. And restarts the match. Styles comes out of the ring, starts to get in Shane's face, dodges a Harper super kick, and... 
chain just gets smacked in the face with that foot, man. And you could I, hear I the smack in the it. 300 section, man. He didn't get hit in the face. He got hit, like, right in the I heard a snap. Right in the though. arm. Okay, that was a loud snap, though. Yeah. Did his shoulder snap? <laughs> yeah. Looks like it. Hopefully, so I don't have to see the Styles and Chain match for WrestleMania. Um, Styles hits Harper off the post, rolls him into the ring, and a 450 splash, and Styles wins. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. It didn't wow. even lead to a distraction no. for a Harper. Or another, or like, restart of the match. Very, very, very intriguing here. That match, I mean, that move by Styles, though. I don't know how he does that. That's incredible. Yeah, the 450 splash, insane. Um, I love the feud. Uh, it's they're making it intriguing, and it looks like we're not again. I think I predict, I kind of predicted sort of this that nothing was gonna happen until the, the SmackDown before WrestleMania, and I still think they're actually gonna go that way. Nothing's gonna be res- resolved until the SmackDown before WrestleMania, and they should keep it that way because it looks like they're doing the right job of building this feud. Backstage, AJ Styles is walking around all proud. Daniel Bryan tries to congratulate Styles. Uh, Styles shrugs him off and says no. Uh, says that Bray Wyatt is having this thing in the ring. It's the declaration or whatever it was called. And he's going to go out to see uh, what it's all about. Interesting. Uh, every, oh, Michael Chow's going back to his corporate job. See you later, Michael Chow. This see you, Michael Chow. Thanks for in, man. Uh, everyone wants to see Styles Rashane WrestleMania nap time. Yeah, no one wants to see that. Thank you. WrestleMania nap time is appropriate for that. Uh, Dean Ambrose. Makes his entrance as soon as he walks in. Dirty deeds to Kurt Hawkins, and that's it. So he's making his entrance, and like I didn't know if he was having a match or not for his in-ring promo, but like grabs a guy and dirty deeds him. And at first, I'm like, is that a local jobber? I couldn't even tell if that was Kurt Hawkins. <laughs> it was great. Just dirty deeds him, throws him out Dude of the ring, ring. <laughs> and continues to start a promo. He, they're billing Ambrose the proper way if he's going to be like this next type of Stone Cold kind of character. So where he just comes in and just does yeah. it, the yeah. opposite of what they want him to yeah. do. Uh, he calls out Corbin. Corbin answers him on the Tron. He cuts a good promo on him from the, the edit, edit of the Tron, and that kind of ends everything here. Everyone criticizes this. They're saying that uh, they, they should have had something physical happen. But again, guys, there's four weeks away. We had a lot of time to do that. They're surely it's going to be announced sometime that they're going to have like a no holds bar kind of match at <laughs> WrestleMania, <laughs> pun intended, uh, at WrestleMania for the United or the Intercontinental Championship. So. We'll see what happens with that. Um, yeah, Corbin Revolution is right, Craig. Corbin is looking better and better, and I'll get to that in the list of 10 why he's looking so good. Um, Ziggler versus Cruz up next in a chairs match. So, again, these matches on SmackDown, unreal what they give us week by week, man. Insane. Ziggler makes his entrance and gets jumped by Apollo Cruz from behind. So, I thought Apollo Cruz was the, the, the face here. Interesting. Um, <laughs> It's just pissed off Maybe. of how, you know, Ziggler. If Ziggler's a, a heel, why, is, why does Ziggler wear American trunks? Or a, he's got the American flag on his pants. Is, is he like, are heels like just anti everything? They are, but I, I guess. I, feel I like, guess they're Ziggler's silver heel yeah, pants. F- faces in WWE, though, wear the American flag. You don't, wear, you don't see a heel wearing American flag. You didn't have Hulk Hogan back in the day when he was heel, when he was Hollywood Hulk Hogan oh, carrying the American flag. Jack Swagger kind of did with the whole Zeb. Oh Coulter yeah, he thing. did. But they kind of like dropped the American flag. He was more of like his own like logo. Yeah, that the snake logo. Yeah, the don't tread on me yeah. thing. Anyway, ends up being a good match though. Surprisingly, gave both superstars a lot of space to perform during this match. A lot of good showings from Apollo Crews in this match. Ziggler ends up pulling off some heel tactics. Uh, and then Atomic drops Cruz, like his, his, it looked like Atomic drops him on the chair, like on the edge of the chair. Ooh, oh, oh. Jesus, ouch. And Ziggler wins and a decent match. Yeah. Well, liked it. they played the whole Corbin or not Corbin, sorry, Cruz getting the chair on his neck. Yeah. Yeah. They played that whole angle. Then Ziggler, yeah. Atomic, Atomic dropped, dropped him. Right. His he, balls. You know, there was a rake to the eye. He, he pulled like a lot of the heel tactics and I'm like, okay, this is good. He, pin, like pin, he pinned it off that. So yeah. I'll. It's all right. Where are these guys going to WrestleMania? Who knows? Probably being the Andre the Giant more about a Royal. Yeah, but I liked Cruz attacking. It's a different side of Cruz. He wasn't yeah. smiling throughout the whole match. No. So he was. This was. I like the seriousness of Apollo Cruz. I like it. The, the, the match wasn't great, but yeah. Bray stuck. Wyatt segment. Oh my is god! At the main event, and it was fucking amazing. This was probably the best thing I've ever seen in a long time. Uh, Bray and Bray Wyatt makes his entry or makes his way out. Really love the entering. His entrance is so mesmerizing. 
that you look at his entrance and what he did this week, go back and watch it, guys. There was no one cheering, but because everyone had their cell phones out. There's no. That's how awesome his entrance. That's like a way of applauding Bray Wyatt, though. His entrance is so mesmerizing. It's awesome. He's definitely being shaped into the next fear of the WWE and the next kind of Undertaker character. Um, and Bray with the title just looks amazing as well. He gets in the ring. He cuts the promos on Styles. And Orton interrupts from this shack-looking place. I guess it's the, the white compound. And talks about getting the keys to the kingdom. That all of a sudden turns on Bray Wyatt. Just like that. Wow. I didn't actually think this would happen so soon. As I predicted, I thought it was going to happen to the SmackDown before WrestleMania. Can you imagine if this happened, the SmackDown before WrestleMania? Yeah. I, I think they they rushed it a little bit, but yeah, I'm okay with it. Yeah, uh, He talks about how he will become the master and Bray will become the servant. Ooh. Uh, starts talking about how the shack is the death place of Sister Abigail and, and shows that he dug up Sister Abigail's like grave. And it's got like eerie pictures of like guts and stuff and maggots. And he, he, he dug her up and, and shows what's left of her. And apparently what Bray did to her. So it looks like we found a Bray Wise one to kill Sister Abigail. Okay. Uh, Orton then says he will destroy the resting place of Sister Abigail. And in that, he will destroy Bray Wyatt. And throughout the whole thing, they kept showing like a glimpse of like worms yeah, and, and the maggots. Guts and and the it was dirt. really well done the way yeah. that they. They transition back to the promo from that. And he grabs like a the, the, that that thing, that pitchfork thing kind of, and he's like <laughs> twisting it. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Uh, I thought he was going to crush the chair. I thought he was going to break the chair. Anyways, he starts to grab the gasoline. He starts pouring it everywhere around the compound, gets out. And I forget what Randy Orton says before he lights the match on fire. Um, and he takes the, the match and then lights it on fire. And the whole building goes on fire. Bray Wyatt's losing his freaking mind man throughout the whole thing they keep doing like different camera angles yeah of, like good shots and mm-hmm. it was really well done like, the production of this was out of this town kevin dunn definitely was not involved in this no definitely not <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh wow uh, this, so basically he sets it on fire and does his pose and my god the new album cover yeah <laughs> bray was just losing sets, his mind all over the ring Sets sister abigail's dead body on fire wow i haven't seen that's, a segment like this since, yeah. like, Attitude Era, edgy a ruthless aggression-ish. And it was good. It was all, like, Undertaker-esque, too. Like, it was, stuff we would see yeah, like it reminded me of when Taker was buried alive by yeah. Kane. You remember that? I wouldn't be surprised if Q Magic just turns into a buried alive match. Like, Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt without Luke Harper. Or if Luke Harper's added into it, a buried alive match. That'd be insane. At WrestleMania? <laughs> Why not? Uh, I don't think they could without the no. title, but maybe that payback. Yeah. Um... So insane. What a way to end the show. Production 100% over I'm the top. I'm so glad I went back and watched this. And yeah. you didn't spoil it for me. Yeah. You said you have to go watch the main event. I didn't look at Twitter. I didn't look at anything. Yeah. I was I went in there with no idea what happened. Yeah, and we and ended the show wow. with Bray Wyatt freaking out and losing his fucking mind. And so. it's good. Someone finally turning the tables on Bray Wyatt and playing yeah. the mind games on him. That's going to be interesting to see what goes on from now. Again, SmackDown. So good. Makes you want to keep tuning in every week. I don't care about Raw. I don't want to tune into that shit. Do you guys want us to not review Raw anymore? <laughs> if you guys want us to not review Raw, I don't mind not reviewing Yeah, it I'll just review SmackDown and we'll add 205 Live or NXT. I don't care. We'll make, Raw, a, we'll make until, a poll. Until Raw becomes watchable again, I don't know if I want to review it. I don't either. So we're going to put a poll on this week. Yeah. If you guys vote that we don't want to re- want, you yeah. don't want us to review Rob. Well, think about it. Think about it. Don't just give me your answer right now. Think no, about it. Think about it. Yeah. So I gave SmackDown a 9.5 out of 10. <laughs> the 0.5 that was missing was due to the exclusion of tag teams. Now is it? I'm giving it uh, 9. 9. Okay. It's fair. Uh, I wanted more from the Cruz Ziggler thing. Yeah. And yeah, the lack of tag teams. But other than that, everything else was phenomenal. Yeah. Pun intended. Phenomenal. Great way to end SmackDown <laughs> with a uh, segment. Yeah. All right. So, your SmackDown review is over. You guys are listening right now. You're in for a treat. We have our our and our next segment, the list of ten, and I'm going to debut the theme that I've created for the list of ten. So, guys, here we are with the list of ten. Ten. You know what? You know what happens? You know what's going to happen? You just made the list! That's right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the list 
of 10 in that new glorious theme that I created. And this segment is where me and myself, or myself and Corporate Cappy, have five moments, our top moments of the week, and we either give it a rating of 10 or a list moment. And <laughs> we, we were so excited to finally debut that yeah. theme. <laughs> and I debuted it, and that's going to be the theme from now on, ladies and gentlemen. And list of 10, let's start it off. Corporate Cappy. We might as well start off with the 10, what we just talked about. Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt segment. One of the best endings I've seen probably since the Ruthless, Ruthless Aggression era when Kane and Undertaker had the whole buried alive thing. So, I mean, I, I'm so excited for this feud now. I don't even care if Styles is in it or not. But yeah. the way that they ended that, I could not see Monday Night Raw doing a segment like that to end their show. Could you? No. No way. No. No way Raw would do that. No. So, Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt, and lighting Sister Abigail's dead corpse on fire and the whole Wyatt compound, that, for me, gets a perfect 10. Awesome, awesome. And Greg, yes, that was a pun towards you when I said glorious. I'm glad you caught that. <laughs> uh, my moment, my first moment, is a list moment. And that goes to Jinder Mahal being called hard-bodied Mahal. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Who the fuck thought of this, man? Honestly. They are 100% shoving it in our face that Mahal is juicing. Juicer Mahal is more like it. Or Shooter Mahal. He's up there shooting into his ass backstage and getting all jacked up and people are wondering why he got big in less than two weeks. It's just, it goes right back to what I always used to say, like, part-timers. Oh, yeah. You're part-time? You can take some drugs. You take some drugs? Take some drugs. Oh, go ahead. Take some drugs. Take some drugs. Um... Corey Grace kept saying, yeah, he did complain. And for that, Jinder Mahal. You know what? You just made the list. Yeah, Jinder Mahal, you made the list. Yeah, it was cringe, Craig. It was terrible. Um, next moment, Brandon Caputo. Why do you say my real name? Oh, I said your real name. Whoops. Everyone knows it by now, but still. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, I'm breaking character Cappy. here. Sorry. I'm not, it's not Paul Levesque talking to Phil, Phil Brooks, Brooks over here. Yeah. Or my boy Paul White. Yep. So, list moment. Nia Jax. Beating Bailey in the pointless tag team match, and the same four women for the tenth time. Okay, I understand Nia Jax winning makes sense, but the fact that they've had this tag match again—we've <laughs> seen it ten times already in 2017, probably. <laughs> Not even since the brand split. The same four women involved in the same tire fire feud. You know what? For that. You know what? You just made the list. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's going to make the list 100% every week. My next moment is another list moment. And that goes to the exclusion of American Alpha on SmackDown. All we got is like a YouTube video of Chad Gable's emotional return to Minnesota. Um, no tag team match or anything or anything to further the feud with the Usos. Could be due to the two-hour show, but still. You really want to go in... I don't really want to go out and give SmackDown any bad rating, but you know what... Um, to them not including any tag team for that, SmackDown, unfortunately... You know what? You just made the list! Yeah, makes the list. My next list moment goes to the Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns contract signing being the main event of Monday Night Raw. Hmm. Again, these two guys in the main event. They really want us to get over with these guys. But it's not working, especially when Roman Reigns crawls over and signs the contract. <laughs> With his broken carcass. <laughs> so, like Roman Reigns, every week, the weekly nominee yep. on the list of ten. You know what? You just made the list. Yes, Roman. You are always going to make the, yeah, roar. Charter I'm, member. I'm not playing that, Greg. Roar. I'm not playing that. No. You want to make me play it. My next moment is a list moment as well. Tyus O'Neal useless filler match against Sheamus. Useless Facebook video with a fight in catering. Who cares? Who cares, man? Who cares about this? Why did it happen? I don't know. Sheamus and Title won't feud anytime soon. Just like Monday Night Raw, every goddamn week, it was dumpster fire. And for that, Titus and Sheamus... You know what? You just made the list. That's right. You make the list. I'll, I'll end off on a high note, so I'll get my last list moment out of the way. James Ellsworthless <laughs> being put in a mixed tag match versus Cena next week with Nikki and Carmella involved. Am I supposed to take this match seriously? There's no, no you're not, way. You're not supposed to take it seriously. Who, who would take this seriously? 
they're promoting it for next week like an actual match. There's yeah, no way Ellsworth would be able to match. fight a match against John it's, Cena. I bet you it's gonna be more. Uh, it's gonna be more the women. And then, and Why is this a match? Why do we need to see this? And I for that... You know what? You just made the list! Yeah, make Hell's the list. worthless, man. I'll end up on a high note, too, so I get my last 10 moment out of the week. You mean list moment? And list moment out of the way. And uh, it's to the club. I don't know what to say anymore. Uh, what I fear the most is happening week by week. I'm so pissed at what Derby has done to them, and they've... Gotta give credit where Chris work in that promo. All of them, really. Even Nikki at the end, even with her one-liner. Yep. So, for that... For that, it gets that, a. They get a. Ten. Never thought John Cena would be a oh, ten moment for me. Me either. And my last moment, which is a ten moment, Baron Corbin continuing to be groomed to be future world champion. Even though there was no match this week, Corbin cut a really good backstage promo on Ambrose. It was great. It's showing that Corbin can do it all. He can cut promos. He can do uh, uh, spots where there's no match. There's a brawls on the outside. He can actually do matches. He's got a great finisher. His mic work is phenomenal. Corbin will be unreal top heel in the future, and probably a future world champion as a heel. For that, Baron Corbin, you get a perfect. Ten. Yep, and that's it. That's it for that. Hope you guys enjoy the new theme the new song. Theme song, yes, it is great. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any headlines this week. Uh, there was really wasn't that many news to talk about. Articles, no. Other than. Uh, some TNA things with the Hardys contracts ending. There's some teasing going that they're going to WWE. Uh, Beth Phoenix in the Hall of Fame. And I really didn't see anything uh, newsworthy. So hopefully there's more uh, next week uh, for the the news part of the show. It's sad because I like the headline music. Oh, we well. played enough of it yesterday. Yeah, we did. If you listen to our <laughs> yeah. Trade Center Trade Breakers yeah, episode, so you can take a break for this week. <laughs> yeah. Clicked it too much. It needs a break. Yeah. <laughs> it needs a break. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up for week number 47 of the Lowdown Show Brain Wars on the Hose Bard Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten, and WWE Headlines were is absent this week. We'll be talking about any important news in WWE and anything that's related to the WWE. Remember, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. Or on the Spreaker app available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself or on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWP. And it's also available on iTunes by searching The Lowdown Show Brand Wars. You can follow the podcast on Twitter and join in the conversation by having your thoughts and questions read right here on the podcast by tweeting at No Holds Bard and following at No Holds Bard WP. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and every week I'm continuing to be joined by my co-host, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cap. Really hope Fast Lane does not bliss me off. For I really week. hope it doesn't bliss me off here. And as always, we are always here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. Yeah.